Hello, hey, it's Joel, uh, as you probably know, and welcome to our weekly devotional. I'm in my backyard, which I love my backyard. We have some woods back here, and uh, you might hear some birds chirping or some bugs chirping. You might hear some people go by on their bikes. There's a sidewalk right over there. You might even hear my daughter, Willow, who's over there uh, in our porch doing some things. But I like being out here. I like being out in creation, uh, where God created everything. And it's a joy for me. So that's where I am right here for our devotional. To start off, I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about it for a second. And the question is this, does God love you? Okay, now personalize it for a second and just ask the question, does God love me? Does God really love me? And you might think, well, of course he does. Um, God loves all of us, but we're not necessarily all in that same space. And we're gonna unpack that here a little bit for just a minute. But before we do that, I wanna ask you another question. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand if you were born outside of Florida. Anybody born outside of Florida, raise your hand. Okay, cool, yeah, I was. I was born in the beautiful state of South Carolina. And I lived there for four or five years, but I got tired of South Carolina and talked my parents into moving here to Florida. Uh, we moved to Orlando, and that's basically I grew up in Orlando. I'm a Florida boy. Um, and I loved Orlando. I played sports while I was in Orlando. Every sport you could think of except hockey. Uh, we played in Orlando. It was a blast. I learned to uh, ski, go water skiing. I did a lot of fishing. Uh, we were really into the outdoors. And I actually had a motorcycle. I did a lot of um, off-road dirt bike riding on my motorcycle. A lot of people don't know that. But I loved motorcycle riding. It was a blast. But my favorite thing was um, fishing and boating and going out on our boat. Now, we had actually, as I was growing up, we had three boats in our family. But the reason we had three, we didn't have a ton of money, but my dad built two of the boats. And uh, he, can, he could build boats, and he built a couple sailboats. It was pretty cool. Um, I'm not very good at things like that, but my dad could do those kinds of things. It's Father's Day, so a little shout out to my dad. But we also had a, like a ski boat, so I learned to ski and things like that on the boat. My wife grew up here in Melbourne, and she also was out on boats and out in the ocean, swimming, snorkeling, all that fishing, all those kinds of things. And after we got married, we just said, you know what, we should probably get a boat. And as a lot of you know, we have a small little boat, and it's been our family's favorite thing to go out boating, boating vacations, things like that. Well, to um, drive a boat, you might think it's pretty easy, sort of like driving a car except on the water, but it's not. It's a lot different. So I took a course on how to drive a boat. And one of the main things they taught me, and they taught us a lot of things, but one of the main things they taught me was this, when you're driving a boat looking straight ahead, here's what you need to look for. It's a little thing that goes like this. It says, uh, if the water's brown, you'll run aground. So that's the first thing. You look to see if the water's brown, it probably means it's very shallow and you're gonna run your boat aground. Second thing was uh, white, you just might. So if it's white, it may not be real shallow, but it's probably shallow and you can see the bottom, although the white sand and stuff's fun to swim in and play in, but it's not fun or safe to boat in because you might run your boat aground. Uh, the third one was green, should be clean. So if the water's green ahead of you, should be good. You might have some problems depending on how big your prop is in your boat. And then the fourth one was blue, straight on through. It means that the water's probably deep enough and you should be fine uh, to go straight on through with your boat. And that's a way to drive the boat and a way to keep yourself safe. So I love the outdoors. I loved boating, fishing, just being out swimming, out in God's creation. And it was a, one of the ways for me to realize how much God loves me. So back to that question, does God love you? Does God love me? Um, and the truth of the matter is, if you think about it, God either loves you or he doesn't. Okay, God either loves you or he doesn't. If there is a God, which we believe there is, does he love you? And of course we believe that he does love you. And I want you to think about that um, because sometimes people might wonder, gosh, does God really love me? Does God love me in the midst of all that I'm going through? And um, I want you to know that he does. In 1 John 4, 16, John writes this, so we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Okay, God is love and he loves you, loves you with all that you are, all that he has. So I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to think um, about this. I want you to think about how much God truly does love you. He sent his son to die for you, okay, to die for all of us. If God had a wallet, he'd have your picture in it. That's how much he loves you. So in life, as you're looking down the path of life 
and, you, and you're looking ahead and you're not sure uh, where to go, you're not sure what's ahead, you're a little bit nervous, you can rest assured that God, that God loves you. Um, there may be obstacles. Maybe you can't see all that's in front of you. Uh, sort of like driving on a boat. You have no idea what's below the water. Okay, and you have some you have some guidelines to go by, but you're never really sure. Okay, but in the midst of all of that, you can rest assured and you can know that God loves you. Isaiah 54:10 says this: "The mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. God's love will never depart from you. God's love will never leave you." So today, I just just rest assured and have the peace of mind knowing that God loves you. God loves you more than anything. It's a promise. You can count on it. Uh, it's blue water straight ahead with God. It's clean straight on through. Uh, he'll never depart from you. He loves you. He'll always love you. He loves you with a um, always never ending love. So believe that. Believe that God deeply loves you and live your life into that. Okay? Okay, let's take a minute and let's talk to God in prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for creation, for all that you've given us, for the land, for the water, for the air, um, for all that we have here, God. We're so thankful for that. Thank you for your amazing love, the love that you demonstrate uh, all the time for us and to us, and especially through your son, Jesus, uh, who came and because he loves us so much was willing to die on the cross for us so w that we might live forever with you in heaven. So we thank you for that. Thank you, God, for your love. Help us to live into that and to know that every single day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Have an awesome day. God bless you and thanks. Safe boating. <laughs>